Hey everybody, hope you're good. Um, it's been a long time since I've done a vlog. <laughs> My apologies. Um, well, uh, I don't even know if I've even done any updates or anything, but um, so basically God got us a house. Uh, we were staying with friends and family for about five weeks, um, which was a lot longer than what I thought. Um, <laughs> a lot longer than I would have liked, but I mean, our friends were amazing, man, like God totally blessed us and took care of us and um, my mother-in-law was awesome and, uh, but it's nice to be back together as a family, you know, because um, we were split up for those five weeks, so that was a bit rough, but you know what, God is always teaching and always, you know, wanting us to learn new things and in order for us to learn, we have to be taken out of a place of comfort, um, you know, so it, it was awesome it was so good and um, we are super blessed to be in a gorgeous house honestly like I'm so glad we waited that we were patient that we just said okay Lord we want what you have for us we want what you want and if it means we have to wait until who knows how long then so be it and sure enough he comes through people he does if we are patient enough to wait on him instead of trying to take matters into our own hands so um, we live in Paris probably and I'll just give you a quick mess but that's our kitchen um i don't want to like do the whole house tour because i don't i don't know it's, to me it's just showing off and stuff and i don't like doing that but um because really it, it's nothing that we've done it's it's all the lord so be to god wait i'll just show you the dog kane kane kane, kane. he's got the owl and i can't even show you because my hands are like anyways he's a joke well so um, so my first vlog uh, on my new pad, um, oh yeah, it's sunny outside, it's like roasting, yay! Um, anyways, so my new vlog, my new vlog, my new house, first step, first, I can't even talk, uh, first vlog from the new house. Um, okay, so I was reading these yesterday and I really, you know, I was thinking, oh, I should do a vlog about this, but, um, but when I was reading again today, I was actually reading nothing to do with what I was reading yesterday, um, but the Lord just reminded me that I, I really should do a vlog on this, um, and it's basically about God hearing us when we pray, you know, um, I'm sure a lot of people at times say, oh, does God even hear my prayers, you know, because we know the, the verse, the prayer of the righteous man availeth much, you know, um, which basically just means, you know, if you're a righteous believer, disciple of Jesus, then the Lord hears your prayers, you know. Now, he may not answer right away, but he still, he definitely hears you. So that's kind of God's promise that, yeah, if you're walking in righteousness, I am hearing you. I am listening to you. I'm not ignoring you. I'm not kind of sticking your prayers in a drawer and shutting it and, you know, kind of taking my sweet time to get back to you. You know, he does hear and, you know, he will answer at some point. Um, so we kind of know that verse, but there are times when, you know, now I think this is more the case where people think that God is listening to them. People think that God can hear them and is paying attention to their prayers. Um, but he's really not. And there's a reason why he's not. So, um, I was, I read Psalms almost every day, a Psalm, at least a Psalm a day anyway. Um, and I was listening to, or I was reading this, um, and I'll start with, it's Psalm 66, and I'll actually, it's only, it's verse 18, but I'm going to start in 16 because it kind of, um, builds up to it. So, come and hear all who fear God and worship him with awe-inspired reverence and obedience. And I will tell you what he has done for me. I cried aloud to him, and he was highly praised with my tongue. Verse 18, if I regard sin and baseness in my heart, or iniquity, or evil, really, that is, if I know it is there and do nothing about it, the Lord will not hear me. And then he goes on to say, but certainly God has heard me. He has given heed to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be to God, who has not turned away my prayer, nor his loving kindness from me. Um, and in my particular Bible, uh, because it's an amplified, it has a whole bunch of verses, like under that, um, the Lord will not hear me. It has a whole bunch of verses that kind of, uh, support what David's saying here in, in different parts of the Bible. So the first one's, uh, first one's Proverbs 15, 29, 28, 9, Isaiah 1, 15, John 9, 31, and James 4, 3. 
Um, so I'm going to read the Proverbs 15:29, and this is what it says. So this is a like a backup, a supporting of the one that I just read. The Lord is far from the wicked and distances himself from them, but he hears the prayer of the consistently righteous, that is, those with spiritual integrity and moral courage. Um, okay, so spiritual integrity, underline that word, spiritual integrity. Um, Proverbs 28.9, I'll just read that because I'm right here in Proverbs anyway. Um, okay, so he who turns his ear away from listening to the law of God of man, I'm glad I read this one, even his prayer is repulsive to God, okay? Um, yeah, that's pretty blunt. Um, okay, so David kind of says, if I regard sin and, and baseness in my heart, and what David's saying is, if I know that there's sin and rebellion against God in my heart, and I don't do anything about it, then he doesn't hear me, that he will not hear my prayers. Um, which you know, in my mind and spirit makes total sense. Um, because if we're, it's like, it's like my kid, you know, if I tell them not to do something and they they keep on doing it, but at the same time, they're like, ah, but mommy, can you, um, buy me this new toy? I really want this new toy, but they're in the middle of doing something that I've told them not to do. Like, is there any chance of them even getting a new toy remotely? Absolutely not. <laughs> because if they're not even, if they're not, simply obeying me when I say, can you please not do that? Like, can you please not dump all the dog food out onto the floor, you know? Um, but if they're standing there, like, picking it up, dumping it out on the floor, picking it up, dumping it out, oh, can, mom, can I have a new toy? Can I have a new toy? You know, you're like, no, I'm not even going there. Um, I mean, that's a very basic, shallow example of, to me, what that means and what that signifies. But um, you know, if we are in active rebellion and we know that there's active rebellion in our hearts, you know, then why would God, you know, be like, okay, tell me, you know, I want to have a conversation with you. I want to talk to you like that. To and, and that's what prayer is. It's having a conversation with God. But if you've got this, it's like the elephant in the room, right? If you've got this big thing in your heart, um, and you're not willing to do anything about it. It's like, how can God sit and talk to you face to face when there's this big thing right there and he can't, you know, God's not gonna talk around anything. He doesn't work like that, as far as I understand. Um, he doesn't ignore the elephant in the room. He doesn't brush things under carpets. He deals with our sin, right? And he wants us to deal with our sin exactly why Jesus died. So I'm going to go back to that uh, Proverbs 28. Um, he and this, so now this is talking about us. Okay, so uh, David is describing God's part, right? So if, if I know that there's sin in my heart, God will not listen to me. He will not take the time to listen to me. Why? Because I'm refusing to deal with the, the big problem. And I'm pretending that there is no problem and that God's, everything's, you know, hunky-dory when it's not so and this is why proverbs 28 9 he who turns his ear away from listening to the law of god and man um even his prayer is repulsive to god right so you know if god's telling you not to do something you know or god's in a, in the word has said listen don't don't dig your enemy in the face love your enemy and you've dug your enemy in the face and you're saying, and you keep having the stance, oh, well, I was in the right, I didn't do anything wrong, I, you know, they did this on me. That's a good example. God can't hear you because that's not right, because that's not what his law says. That's not, well, not the law, but th that's not what the spirit of the law says, you know. Uh, Jesus said, love your enemies and do good to those who hurt you or persecute you, right? Um, that's what Jesus came to, to teach and preach. So if you're going to ignore that and pretend that you're in the right for doing something wrong, how can he hear you? How can he, you know, seriously consider what you're saying to him and, you know, uh, respond in the way that he wants to respond, right? This is, again, this does not start with God. It starts with us. 
just like sin started with us. It wasn't God rejecting us. It wasn't God turning us away. It wasn't God kicking us out of the garden and saying, well, I don't like you anymore. No, it's, it's always starts with us, you know? Um, and same with people going to hell. God doesn't want people to go to hell, but people will make a choice to either submit themselves and surrender their lives to Jesus, or they won't, and they'll want to do things their own way. Again, it's not God. It's us. We choose it. Um, so if you turn away your ear from the law or the spirit of the law of Christ and of the word, then don't be surprised when God doesn't answer your prayers or when God, you know, it seems like he's far away or he's not listening or whatever. Um, and unfortunately, most of the time, I think people are deceived and think that God is hearing them. And I'm going to not stick my foot in it, but maybe to some people I will stick my foot in it, and say people who um, insist on living certain lifestyles, um, whether it's, you know, you appear to some people like you're, you know, you're righteous and you're, you're a disciple of Jesus, but, you know, you have this double life where you go clubbing or you drink or you do whatever, you know, and you're not living a godly life. Um, there you go. You know, you're deceived if you think God still listens to your prayers. People who insist on living a homosexual lifestyle. Now, not the struggle of, you know, the internal struggle of dealing with that because um, obviously there's stuff there that God needs to renew your mind about and to heal you of and the enemy's just been lying to you and you've, you know, maybe received these lies and thought they were truth. People who are struggling with it, that's not the issue. The issue is people who are choosing to walk this out, which are a lot of Christians, believe that it is okay to be gay and to be in a relationship with another same-sex person and that God still listens to you and that God thinks it's okay and that God, you and God, you and God are on good terms. It, you're not. You're not. It says right there. It says in here that you're not. Um, you know, and... <sighs> And I'm not even just pinpointing these two kinds of people. Anybody, anybody who knows what the Bible says about a subject and outwardly, outrightly um, goes against it, God cannot hear you. He cannot respond to you. He cannot, you know, bless you. He cannot support you. He cannot, because you're putting yourself in a place of rebellion again. You're taking yourself outside of God's grace. You're taking yourself outside of the blood of Jesus, outside of the covenant, outside of his protection. Um, and his, you're taking yourself outside of his righteousness. Your choice, by, by your decisions, you're taking yourself outside of his righteousness and you are uh, deciding to do things your own way again, right? And, the, and the, I think at that point, the only time God will actually hear what you say is when you say, I am sorry, I repent. I think the word repentance, repent, sorry, turns his ear back on to you, right? Because you're acknowledging your sin. You're acknowledging whatever's in your heart. Um, you know, because David said again, uh, but certainly God has hurt me. He has given ear heed to the voice of my prayer. So he hears the righteous. He hears those who are righteous before him. Um, like I read in that other verse. Um, the righteous person he hears, and again, not of our righteousness, but because of Jesus' righteousness, because we are in right standing, right? Because remember that it said that consistently, those who consistently, shoot, where did that verse go? Um, uh, those who consistently walk in righteousness, right? Um, and sincerity is the key. To all this. Uh, let me just read my notes. Yeah, sincerity is the key, you know, um, and being honest with God and, and being honest with yourself and ask the Holy Spirit if you are deceived in any area of your life. Seriously, we, uh, you know, deception doesn't come in a blatant lie. It doesn't. It comes in the little truth mixed with lies and so many people, even believers, even disciples of Jesus are deceived about a lot of things because they don't know this, right? And if you don't know this, you'll not know when you're being deceived, right? And a common deception in the church is that God hears, God listens to everybody when they pray to him. They don't. He doesn't. He doesn't. And that's just in the word. So check with the Holy Spirit. Make sure there's nothing that you're regarding in your heart of sin, okay? Not something that you don't know about, but something that you're actually harboring, right? Unforgiveness, you know? and get it right with God. Repent, 
get washed, get renewed in your mind, and get right with him, and he will hear you, okay? Be blessed. Have a great Friday.